The following video contains spoilers. We suggest watching the episodes alone in the dark. Hello, Wolf Pack. This is the channel's secondary host, Catastrophe, giving you the review on R. L. Stein's The Haunting Hour episode, My Imaginary Friend. So let's not waste any time and dive right into the imagination of a boy confronted by his sadistic imaginary friend. And the boy isn't actually Wolf and, or hit diving into his mind either. So our episode opens up with our hero, Sean, playing baseball with his brother David out in the rain at night. Like most kids, I'm sure. He sees his crush, Amy, walk by, while his best friend Travis shows up to convince him to talk to her for once and not be shy. Thanks to Travis, he achieves that goal that most shy guys can never succeed, and actually says hi to a cute girl. He and his friends are so proud that he hits a home run, causing the ball to fly into Old Man Dixon's creepy farm. Yes, the farmer is actually called Old Man Dixon. Insert Daryl and Merle jokes here. When Travis volunteers to get the ball from them, David delivers the first spoiler of the episode and says... This is Travis's idea, isn't it? What do you hang out with that guy? He's my friend. He's your imaginary friend. Why does he make it sound like that's a bad thing? Yep. Travis is the titular imaginary friend. Travis isn't really there. As you can tell, Sean has a pretty big imagination since he imagines his invisible best friend looking like a 50s bad boy from a horrible school play. Against David's warnings, Sean and his imaginary friend Travis break into the farm like morons so they can get their ball back, and just for the heck of it, they vandalize old man Dixon's property for fun. Of course, Sean gets caught. Sean! No, no, that's not how it ends. But how would it go if he explained that his imaginary friend made him do it? Instead, Sean gets grounded while his exposition dad tells Sean's whole backstory about how he has no friends and doesn't fit in with others due to moving to this new neighborhood. And he says all this to his own son, making it kind of odd that he's explaining Sean's origin story to his own son, who I'm pretty sure lived through all of this. Sean tries to convince a reluctant David to see his friend Travis so they can finally hang out together. And David, quite easily in fact, sees his little brother's imaginary friend. Of course they do that dumb joke where he can't see him at first but acknowledges him later in conversation before doing a dirt face where he realizes that the invisible guy is real after all. Now that David finally sees Travis in the first eight minutes, he, they can form their fellowship. However, they see outside that Sean's crush Amy is hanging out with this new guy, and Travis convinces Sean that this guy that they've never seen before is possibly her boyfriend, and he attempts to drive Sean down the dark side by convincing him to destroy the unknown guy's car. Fortunately, David talks sense and advises his brother to not give in to rage. This pisses off Travis, and he views David as an obstacle between him and Sean. And, because this is a kid's show, we see Travis attempt to murder David by drowning him completely on screen. tries to warn his brother that Travis is a psychopath, and he naturally does it in the most jerk way possible.
Hey, what would Amy think if she knew you had an imaginary friend? When he searches for Travis, David sees how powerful Shine's imagination really is when he finds a monster under the bed. <laughs> Travis attempts to kill David by feeding him to the monster under the bed, but for some random reason, Travis decides to give David another chance, despite the fact that we know David is the good guy who's trying to convince Sean that he doesn't need Travis. Travis takes David to the farm, where he forces David to make a sadistic choice. Either he proves himself by burning down Old Man Dixon's farm, which would make Daryl and Merle homeless, or he dies. As you'd expect, David refuses to give in, forcing Travis to try and kill him so he won't stand between him and Sean anymore. Sean apparently has the force now and senses that Travis is assaulting his brother and runs off to save him. We get a lame stealth section of David trying to hide from Travis, but Travis does the smart thing and jumps him near the exit armed with a rake. Thankfully, Sean arrives just in time to save his brother by standing up to Travis. After getting a pep talk from his brother, Sean finally forces Travis to submit to him with his mind. Then we get a really embarrassing scene where Sean tries to kill Travis by throwing stuff at him. This naturally goes right through him, and like a total idiot, Sean actually knocks himself out. Sean reawakens in the house, apparently with a broken arm, and realizes that Travis is finally dead. We get a real cheesy scene where the father shows up, and he shows Sean that he got a get well card that's signed by a lot of friends, telling his son how he has more friends than he realized. I admit that it's super cliché, but I kind of liked it. It did make me feel kind of good about it. David shows up congratulating his brother on beating Travis, and Sean admits that he no longer needs his imaginary friends and finally grows up. Then we get our big twist ending. I'm going to tell you all right now that this is a pretty huge reveal. This will have spoils on a lot, so are you ready? It turns out that David was an imaginary friend, too, the entire time. His own brother was never really there. Sean says that he no longer needs his imaginary brother and sends him away, too, I'll bet regretfully. And I'm not going to lie, it is a very sad moment. Oh, me too, right? It can't be. I really liked it much more than I thought. When the episode first aired, I didn't care much for it, but after seeing it again, I enjoyed it much more than I expected. Sean is a relatable character who is desperately searching for his own ID, like all of us are. And if you really think about it, both his imaginary friends, Travis and David, represent Sean's shoulder angels. Travis being the dark side trying to corrupt Sean down the dark path while David is the noble voice of reason, attempting to have Sean build up his confidence and do what's right. The twist that David was the imaginary friend too all along and didn't even know it was pretty well done and you don't see it coming, considering that they do give away that Travis was also an imaginary friend, but we're led to believe that he was the only imaginary friend. Of course, I just spoiled it now, but hey, you were warned. While this episode is not exactly the scariest episode in the series, I liked it because it gave us something really deep and showed that The Haunting Hour could give us a simple story with real emotional depth. I give it an 8 out of 10. The story was fantastic, but the only scene that really ruined it a little was that Sean actually knocked himself out, and that was a little too funny to take serious. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe here on Wolf Entertainment. If you got an episode you want reviewed by either me or Wolf, then please put it in the comments section below. I'm Catastrophe, and I'll see you all later. We've detected a surge of energy coming from this exact galaxy, though it would take centuries just to comb through all of this. Perhaps we should just wait for more videos released by the Wolf or his companion so we can pinpoint their exact location. <sighs> 
I know that every minute we waste, the wolf grows stronger. But if we find the cat and he'll provide information on your enemy, you'll know all his strengths and weaknesses. <sighs> Excellent. I'll keep monitoring. <laughs>